Let us practice this simple technique which introduces all of us practitioners to our own respiratory system. We often talk about the respiratory system and the breathing patterns. A very, very relaxing technique and can be practiced at any time which is awareness of breathing process, awareness of our own breath. Sitting comfortably in Padmasan with spine upright, shoulders tucked back, eyes gently closed, For those of us who can't sit in a Padmasana, sit in Sukhasana or lie down in Shavasana and relax the whole body. And observe the natural and spontaneous breath. Develop total awareness of the rhythmic or unrhythmic flow of breath. Feeling the breath flowing in and out of the nose. Consciously taking awareness of cool air going into the nostrils and warm air coming out. Try not to control the breath in any way. Notice that the breath is cool when it enters the nostrils. Warm when it flows out. Observe this with a completely detached attitude. Continue being a witness. If awareness intensifies, you will feel it flowing in and out of the back of your mouth too, above the throat. Feel the breath flowing in and out of the back of the mouth, above the throat too, bringing awareness down to the region of the throat. Bring the awareness further down to the chest. Feeling the breath flowing between the trachea and the bronchial tubes. Next, feel the breath flowing in the lungs. Check how lungs expand and come back to normal. See.
Shift the attention to the rib cage and observe the expansion and back to the relaxation of the rib cage now. Knowing that you're doing a marvelous job of this breath, its awareness, bring the awareness further down to the abdomen. Feeling the abdomen moving upward on inhalations and back downwards on exhalations. And finally become aware of the entire breathing process. From the nostrils to the abdomen, continue observing the inhalations. From the abdomen to the nostrils, continue observing exhalations. Unravel the magic of being alive. And hence, breathe. Unravel the magic of being alive. And hence, breathing. From this natural breathing and awareness, let us all together move to abdominal and diaphragmatic breathing, which is practiced by enhancing the action of the diaphragm and minimizing the action of the rib cage. Inhale and inflate the abdomen like a balloon. Exhale and bring it back to normal. Visualize your diaphragm, a domed sheet of muscle that separates the lungs from the abdominal cavity. is a ceiling to the abdomen and a flooring to the lungs. Continue abdominal breathing. Reminding ourselves that, wow, we woke up this morning alive, breathing, and are aware mindfully of this abdomen as it inflates and hence all the organs within as they inflate when we inhale and purposely inflate them. And when we exhale and deliberately bring them back to normal. See how it rises and falls.
know and acknowledge that during inhalations the diaphragm goes down pushing the abdominal contents further downwards and upwards during exhalation the diaphragm moves upwards so all the contents the mani is in the manipur move back inwards abdominal breathing pranayam is as important as any other pranayam or even more the movement of the diaphragm signifies that the lower lobes of the lungs are being utilized well we never use the diaphragm properly let us utilize it completely in this abdominal pranayam because it will cause a beautiful equal expansion of the alveoli improving our lymphatic drainage from all the basal parts of the lungs massaging our liver our stomach our intestines all those other organs the liver the spleen the pancreas the gall bladder large and small intestines which all lie immediately beneath see how exerting this positive effect on the cardiac functions and coronary supply improves the oxygenation of the blood improves the circulation infants newborns children are abdominal breathers abdominal breathing is the most natural and efficient way to breathe sometimes due to tensions poor postures restrictive clothing lack of training losing out practice on regular pranayam we often forget how to breathe with the abdomen and once this effortlessly becomes a part of our daily life and once correct breathing is restored there will be a great improvement in the state of our physical and our mental well-being there are absolutely no contraindications of abdominal breathing continue observing the spontaneous breath without controlling it in any way if even now you are unsure just place the right palm on the abdomen and the left palm on the chest the right hand will move up with the inhalation and down with the exhalation the left hand will be exactly where it was not moving
See how abdominal tension is completely relieved. Try not to expand the chest or move the shoulders at all. See how very, very effortlessly and naturally the entire pelvic platform moves down on your yoga mats or the floor. And from this lower breath, let's move to the middle breath. Thoracic breathing, which utilizes the middle lobes of the lungs. By expanding and contracting the rib cage on inhalations and exhalations. As we continue to sit in a meditative posture or lie in Shavasana. As we continue keeping our body completely relaxed. As we continue maintaining unbroken awareness of the natural breath. Concentrating on the front and the sides of the chest. We discontinue diaphragmatic breathing and begin to inhale by slowly expanding the rib cage. With exhalations, we bring the ribcage back to normal. Feeling the movements of the individual ribs outwards and upwards with awareness of expansion as we draw air into the lungs, literally meditating on them. We expand the chest as much as possible. When we exhale, we relax the chest muscles, normalize them, feel the ribcage contracting. As every exhalation brings air out of the lungs. Keep this a slow, slow and deep process. Do not use the diaphragm at all. Continue thoracic breathing for a few minutes. Pausing slightly after each inhalation and exhalation into the shunyas.
if you have experienced a complete thoracic inhalation and exhalation in every breath you can keep your hands down in case you brought them to the chest earlier the third one the upper breath the clavicular breathing is the final stage of total rib cage expansion we move on together now for clavicular breathing the upper breath as we continue sitting or lying in shavasan relaxing the whole body and while performing thoracic breathing we inhale fully expanding the rib cage and making hollows near the collar bones utilizing the upper portion of the lungs around the base of the neck the shoulders and the collar bones move up slightly slowly exhale first releasing the lower neck and upper chest and then relax the rest of the rib cage back to its starting point clavicular breathing involves the upper breath only after thoracic inhalation has been completed shoulders will lift a little collar bones will come into a hollow nearby the west calls this the upper breath in your own comfort zone now we do yogic breathing combining all the three techniques yogic breathing maximizes inhalations and exhalations using all the components of breath The main purpose of yogic breathing is to control the breath, correct the poor breathing habits and increase our oxygen intake.
as we continue sitting in our meditative postures or lying in shavasan we inhale and inflate the abdomen fully further breathe and inflate the lungs listening in antar mon the sound of our inhalations and further inhale all the way up till rib cage is full and the hollows near the collarbones appear those are called clavicles we then exhale completely yogic breathing can be practiced at any time it's extremely useful in situations of high stress anger to calm the nerves and to soothe the mind during problems or pressures or stresses anger the breath goes erratic we are practicing a combination of abdominal breath that is the lower breath thoracic breath that is the middle breath clavicular breath that is the upper breath inhale inflate the abdomen fully but inhale only one third push the pelvic platform the anus the perineum down and out inhale further fill the lungs inhale further lift the shoulders a little make hollows in the hollows in the clavicles exhale non stop long exhalations for those of you who do ujjayi incorporate ujjayi in the exhalations first and the inhalations next although the inhalation is one third at the abdomen the inflation is full although the inhalation is another one third at the thoracic area the expansion is full although the inhalation is one third at the clavicles the hollows appear the lift in the shoulder blades the tuck back is full you've used every component of breath of the respiratory system hold only in shunya every breath and exhale exhale in ujjayi make sure you are steady choose your pace from gross to subtle stay at the gross move to subtle or stay at the subtle move to gross or just continue the pace the speed you are in magical yogic breathing promises to gain control over breath promises to correct poor breathing habits promises an increase in oxygen intake what more can we ask for promises to be useful in situations of high stress or anger promises to calm us 
a calm mind will give us a healthy system nervous system while we included in a daily yoga program in our asanas in our sleep during work on our office chairs while we cook while we run errands we continuously breathe with full awareness like infants newborns children breathe yogic breathing practice the parigraha of oxygen to understand the aparigraha of the rest that we don't need within understand the dualities make this more slow more intense so that no sound is heard bringing about inner silence antar maun every inhalation will push the pelvic platform down on the yoga mat on the floor on the carpet knowing that the 33 1/3% of each part the abdomen the thoracic and the clavicular area will involve an entire physical filling up so that no space is left within us to oxygenate any more let every exhalation be in ujjayi you can relax the neck first the upper chest and then allow the lower chest and the abdomen to relax without straining on the exhalations or you can relax all three together at one go as you exhale in ujjayi make sure you're completely empty to get completely full by now this entire movement of yogic breathing should be extremely harmonious and flowing harmonious since there are no contraindications at all for yogic breathing there is no limit to the number of times in fact just like ujjayi it can be practiced throughout it will help us continuously get into meditative minds because awareness is not on any other scattered thoughts and patterns awareness is only on this body that we have for this lifetime our breath
let's not traumatize it by making it erratic situations will change daily intensity of stresses will change daily but yogic breaths will keep on reminding us that everything else is impermanent Yogic breathing is used in most pranayams. Hence make sure your respirations are complete, comfortable and relaxed. Consequently once awareness and control of breathing processes have been established well we can slowly even drop the clavicular breaths and just continue with the abdomen and the thoracic which we will do over a period of time let's end today's practice with 51 kapalabhati Discontinue Kapalabhati to get ready to slowly, in your own time, no hurry at all, open your eyes and rise.